Hello and welcome. I'm Bill Wake. We're here this week working on an Elm interpreter. And uh, yesterday we got one digit working. Today we're going to work on the meaning of life, which is, of course, 42. Get a string of digits working. And uh, we'll see how we do today. So, so far we, we've tackled literals, but all we've gotten is that one digit. We have started exploring parser combinators, abstract syntax trees, and a little tiny bit of an interpreter. Our interpreter says the interpretation of a one digit integer is that number, <laughs> but uh, we'll get better. Okay, and all right. And uh, behind the scenes last time I, I cleared up some of the stuff that's going on. You should see the Chiron there. At least I see it on, yeah, I guess it's on the public screen too. Uh, so the way that works is whatever the top line of todo.txt is, uh, that's, that's the one. When I save it, it changes the Chiron. So uh, we'll, we'll keep this as kind of a stack of stories or things we're doing. And uh, usually I keep track of, oops, <laughs> uh, let's see, yesterday was the 5th. Uh, we worked on this story, parse and interpreter digit. And I would say we 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 did it. <laughs> it's, it's still a little a little too baby and a little too ugly maybe, but but it's a dancing bear that does dance. Okay, so let's go on to multiple digits. All right, and uh, maybe we'll clean up some too. All right, so uh, let's see. We left off. We split off. Let me just get everything here. Well, yeah, I guess this is all of them. So we have our tests. And this this is really, we'll take a minute and refactor. This is really not a Whelm test. It's really a, a number test. Or maybe even int integer tests. Let's Let's go with that. So I can get a rename on here. All right. I, I should mention Whelm is the name I picked for the project. It's it's kind of a multi-layered thing, but it's got Elm in it. So there aren't all that many words that do. And Whelm is kind of being overloaded or overwhelmed. Uh, I guess I guess it could be underwhelmed too. Who knows how you're feeling right now about things, uh, but overwhelmed. And I put together a little icon. Let's see, where is that? Is it my assets? Yeah, so I made a little whale icon out of an elm leaf. Kind of a bizarre whale, but he's a whale. And so whale and elm and whelm, they all kind of mush together. And uh, it's my working title, so what can I say? Okay, so we've we've got these four tests. We match one digit. We we look for things that aren't digit and give basically a syntax error result. We take care of end of string, always a problem, and we not just parse but also interpret. Okay, so the we do the parsing, and we get the result back as an AST and interpret it okay and then we get some output from the interpreter all right and our interpreter class is very minimal and I, i'm still not quite sure how we want to deal with this i'm i'm also thinking that maybe there's a a last output and an output and the last output is just kind of the last line of the output or something um we'll we'll see what what it goes but as you get more and more complicated expressions, the output's going to get a lot bigger. Okay, let's yeah, let's let's go with this one. The, the parser, it's working on some sort of abstract. I don't know, AST abstract syntax tree. I, I'm not sure that's even right to call it that because sometimes your parsers, at least the way we're doing it, you're going to return abstract syntax trees, and other times. I don't know, you're just going to return values, maybe characters and things like that. And I think we're going to have to we're going to have to do some some remapping or something in some cases. So 
um, the way we are now with digit, we do we have an AST type. So I'm I'm mucking up this stuff, and that's not not necessarily good. Let's let's go back to A on this. Make sure this builds. All right, and whatever was going on with that signing, I think I fixed that too. Who knows what that was? For some reason it decided like I must have deleted my profiles or something. Okay, so yeah, that's a tiny bit less confusing. Uh, I don't know the. I'm not quite right on how I'm thinking about things yet, I suspect. But in our case, our digit is either going to return nil if it's a syntax error, or it's going to find the value of the digit and uh, return an AST element, just an Elm integer with the, the value and the type of number. We have number so far. We'll add float and records and all these other things. And rest is the uh, the rest of the input. And again, I don't think I'm quite quite where I want to be on that one. Yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> and then our AST is very simple right now. So this is what feeds the interpreter is um, various type of nodes although various is one at this point but you know we anticipate elm float coming in next maybe i'm jumping a little ahead but this is a convenient way to wrap up these two values that i do know i want some sort of integer some sort of type the only type we've discussed is number um but this parser oh, okay let's put the interpreter to the back I can make a case. Well, maybe maybe our next test will drive the case I'm talking about, but it it seems like we're we're folding together two operations here. One is identifying the next character that is properly parsed, and the other is wrapping it up so it's an elm type and interpreting it and if you've got one digit it probably doesn't hurt to wrap those two together too much it doesn't hurt too much but as we go into handling multiple digits um the the computation isn't going to make sense it's just going to give us one digit's value at a time and then we have to combine them somehow and we're still going to be combining values into an integer type you know um that's that's one piece the other is i'm still not perfectly happy with our parser going from strings to strings i i feel like maybe there's a moment to use a more um encapsulated type that has an index or something like that i i mean when we finish the characters grabbing all the characters for a number like 42 we're going to we would really like to have that in string form because there's there's things to convert strings and yet it's kind of hard to get a string well it's reconstructing it piecemeal from characters is boring i don't know <laughs> okay uh let's see anything else i want to touch at this point well okay the other thing is i i is this a parser? It takes a string, it returns an AST and a string. AST maps to the generic type, so it is a parser. Um, it's a kind of customized thing. I, I don't know. What, what I've seen sometimes is, uh, in, in reading, some of these, some of these do, do something where they separate out the act of matching the character basically we'd like a parser that you give it a condition function and it it takes care of it 
So I think that's a refactoring from where we are. Um, and I can change. Like somehow I want to get this thing or I'm sure there's an is digit on character. Let's let's take a detour. Whoops. Okay, so Swift string. I'm always surprised when the Apple one doesn't pop up to the top, but it does happen that way. Okay, so is digit? No. Okay. character well many people want to know <laughs> now it's funny how hard these things become isn't it I mean I I'm you see for a good long time, you know, you got characters, digit characters, alpha, things like that. Um, oh, it used to be in there and now it's not. Ooh. Yeah, I can, I can, I can match them, but my goodness. Easiest method is this. Yeah, that's the way I've seen people do it too. Uh, is asking his number. Okay. Well, that's probably the winner. <laughs> oh. Zimmerman contains character one returns true. Okay, now we we will stick with this one. Character is asking his number. Okay. Um, can I insert that in here? Well, let's let's do that. Um, hmm. There we go. number and does that do what we character represents a number I'd rather say digit but okay um, I guess they're generalizing it if it is these things then we're going to do this uh, let's see a control I. Okay. Let's run our tests. Oh, what else I did? I put a test scheme on. So this only runs the unit tests. It does not attempt to run the UI tests. So I can do command U and not have to wait 35 seconds just for the UI test. Although the first I haven't run it today, so we may be waiting 35 seconds anyway, but It may feel like I'm making things harder instead of easier. I don't know. <clears throat> B 
but I do feel like this is a this should be a non affecting change and it'll open up a little bit more more stuff for us All right, making progress here guys waiting it's like put your hands off the keyboard let it let it do its thing yeah it took a lot to get rebuilt there like I said the only big change I've made is putting Big Sur on over the holidays but uh, I don't know <laughs> Hadn't noticed it hurting quite that much, but we're almost done. The funny thing is it'll tell us it took 0.79 seconds or whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah, 0.013 seemed longer. All right, now I'm going to pull this out. Can I make a refactoring from it? Extract a method, good. Okay, let's close this digit. Okay, I will trust that refactoring. And now I'm, I'm gonna move it to an extension on character. Um, I think I do it like that, right? Okay, and I'm going to pull this is digit. And he doesn't need this. I see a self, I think. Okay, and then this we're going to call uh, chart out is digit. Okay, let's see if this is a little closer to 0 0.013 seconds here. Yeah, that, that was quite a bit closer. <laughs> okay, um, and it worked. So I can I can pull this out into its own into its own thing. Um, and that's probably a good refactoring. And actually, let me, let me inline this one. And now I don't need this anymore. Okay. And when, when it really is a couple of seconds, I don't mind building and running my tests pretty often. Okay. So let's extract out, oh, a new class. Um, it'll be a new file. It's a Swift file. And the convention is uh, the, the basic class name you're extending plus I could put is digit, but I think I'm going to put categories. And this is me anticipating, <laughs> uh, as you as you can tell. But I think we need is upper and is lower and is letter and is letter or digit. Um, so we'll put this here. And oops. Uh, yeah, because he's still here. All right. I don't think I don't think I'm doing this too much in a bad way, I guess. <laughs> it it reads right. You know, we really do want an extension on the character class. And 
up until version six, it had it, so it's not it's not totally out of the blue either. Okay. Um, now the funny thing here. Hmm. Well, do I do I have enough? That's the. So I want. So I want to split digit. into something that hmm something that returns a character and then and then judges it i don't know and maybe something that that converts it too i don't know but but definitely i want to split this part out um I don't know. I did see something in one of those papers. Let me let me dig around. That was like what we're doing here. Um, this is the Ledger Mac app one. I think they did something like I'm talking about. Right. So I think basically we're trying to return a parser that applies a function and, and this is not your normal extract method. So it's, it's definitely feeling a little funny. Um, hmm. I don't know if I should grow it or, or try and extract it, but but I think what I'm after is something that's like match and it's going to match. It's going to give us a parser that matches a character. I'll say such that, and this is a function, a character uh, returning a Boolean. Okay. So basically this is a predicate uh, character returning a boolean the whole thing is a parser i think <laughs> something like this all right and okay let's uh, we'll take that for now okay and he's going to return a parser And okay, now somehow I got to get hmm. well, we may have to see what kind of parser he is, but but I want to do something that's that's pulling this in. But I don't want is digit. I want to, I want that to be the generic such that function. And I don't know. I almost even want to call it F here. <laughs> maybe, maybe my old C days are not good, right? Uh, we'll see. But I want to say if, if, well, it's got to be like a regular parser. So we got to look for. I want this to be I, I think I'm trying to inline this and let's see how we're doing here a parser
Okay, so this is if f of character then then we want to do <laughs> um I don't think we want to return this. We want to return character is what I'm saying. Okay. Expects one argument which cannot be implicitly ignored. Contextual type foreclosure. Well, I thought it was... Hmm. I thought I could write it this way, but I can certainly do parse colon and put this here parse takes string in okay oh so I'm escaping captures F you're going to offer to Now this stuff I want to I want to drop. Okay. Okay. So this is definitely a non-standard refactoring. <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, okay. So. I'm trying to get the body of this stripped away from the whole number calculation. But if you call match, <laughs> something's, something's right about this, right? If you call match and say, I want to match a character such that it meets this criterion, this function F. Okay, that, that feels like a good thing. I want to be able to say match such that is digit and and it should give me uh, such that character is digit or some function that means that and it gives me back a parser that promises to return nil if it's not one of those characters and to return the character if it is one of those characters so it, it is a true parser coming back for us and we we have the char and the rest and that's that's okay. I know there's better ways to write all this. And I, I think we can, uh, we think we can trim that to it. But the question to me is like, wow, is, is how's digit going to work? How's digit going to use match? So, it's going to call well some somewhere this block here somehow should call match of such that I think even can I even say it this way is digit I, I think I can even just put the function name well I hate the way they select next code I really do Not to convert character or bool to expect the argument type character to bool. Is that really what you're telling me? Let me just close this part. Cannot convert character to nothing to bool. Ooh. Character to nothing to bool. That's what is digit is? I'm confused. This is not a void. Character dot it's digit. I 
I would have said character is a function of character to bool. Oh, it's not. Is it? Okay, let's change this around. Hmm, I'm kind of in the middle. Let's comment this out. My test should run. Whoops, run. All right. Now, if this, I want to make this take a character. Um, C of character and return C. I guess I could do CH. This character is ASCII and character is number. Okay. And I think it's static. Now, instead of this, we'll say character dot is digit of char. Okay, is that consistent? I don't know, with Xcode's primitive refactorings compared to, say, IntelliJ or Eclipse, I feel like I, I get play a little fast and loose sometimes and I'm I will trust this. We did check for a versus digits. So that part's fine. Um, okay. So now this should be happier at least I hope. Okay. Let's let's let parser equal that. I'm trying to keep this straight in my head. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we created a parser that, that does this and then we're going to call parse um, let I, I'm overloading ch for a moment here <laughs> let, let character and um uh rest of input i'll work on these names uh they're going to equal parser dot parse of string must be unwrapped Well, yeah, I guess we got to say result. I keep using the same words, don't I? Uh, um, a result equal that. Okay, so this thing could be nil and it could be uh, the value you want. If a result is nil, I think equals nil, return nil. Okay, if the parse fails, we don't want to go on. Otherwise, digit, well, we don't have to do this anymore because that's being done above. Okay, so let's, let's take this out. Um, result is char well let's let's now we can say um, character and rest of input equals a result uh, I can I definitely can make this better <laughs> exclamation point okay now ch is this okay character rest result is character oh boy um how are we gonna know it's character
<laughs> um, hmm, I'm not sure how to best convert these things or if I need to. Maybe this thing should be parser of character. Let's see how this goes. Okay. So char is never used now. That's fine. Rest of input is never used. Okay. So if the result, if, if we get a result, if we can convert it to a whole number, then we're going to wrap it up and all that stuff. But I don't think we need this rest. We need rest of input. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, that's a pretty horrible way to go about this refactoring. But let's see if it's working and then and then go from there. It, it's definitely doing something I want. Okay. All right, we'll we'll clean up and then make sure it's still what we what we think. Okay. So that just deleted some comments. Now, I know you can do this. Let's see. We can there's there's a guard clause. Guard let character equal uh, string dot first. So this this makes an assignment. If if string dot first exists, else we can just return nil. Okay, so this clause if string is empty, string dot first does not exist, it will return nil. So that that takes care of that. It also assigns that. All right, so again, making sure I'm I'm trying to do small steps, even though I've been doing ugly steps. Okay. Now, um, I can also, I can also guard, I don't know if this will read better or not, but if we guard f of char, else return nil. Um, let me space this a little more consistently. Oops. Okay, so if you don't have a first character, then bug out. If you don't match the criteria, um, maybe this would be better called predicate. Okay, if you don't match the criteria, bug out. Otherwise, we're going to return the character with the rest. Okay, um, this, this should work, but it's double working. We're doing double the work. Okay, now I should be able to say return character with this stuff. Is that the right number? Yeah. Okay. And I believe that takes care of that. Okay. Parser it returns is look at, see if you can get a first character. If not, you're out of you're at end of file basically or end of end of input bug out if you don't match the predicate then you're not a match that's the goal of this thing otherwise just return that character string return that character with the rest of the stream okay that is a lot tighter <laughs> and i think you can combine these conditions but I don't know. I think it might read better like this. It's yeah.
make a decision on that. Okay, now let's see if let's see if I was right that I don't really need this parse colon. I'm pretty sure I don't. Because you've got a closure that's the one argument, you should be able to pass it in directly. So whatever I was doing before is probably because I was missing this. And I don't know, string. Let's let's avoid this word. I'm gonna call it input. Stream might be better, but okay, input dot first, input dot drop first. I still have a string in here, so I'm worried when I change my representation I'm not I'm not properly isolated, but uh, that's okay. We will let's look at this thing now. So I really feel like I'm working too hard on this on this bottom one. If string is empty, return nil. I think we've covered that above that first guard clause input first and empty go together. So we're going to create a parser that matches digits. OK, I like this. <laughs> Match such that character is digit. That reads nicely. We're going to get the result. If it's nil, OK, yeah, we can we can certainly do some sort of let's do if. Yeah, let's turn this around. If let ch. I'm going to pull that stuff from the bottom. equals parser dot parse of string. Then we're going to do something. OK, so character rest of input. Well, if it if it equals that, then this otherwise we return nil. So this stuff must go in the middle. <laughs> Okay, so we did the parser.parse. Um, we got a character back. Okay, if it's nil, we are falling through to the bottom. We got chair rest of input. Okay, if result equals character whole number return. Okay, I think we're getting there. All right, expected if after condition data equals parse dot parse. Okay, parser match character is digit. Uh, we get a parser. Um, I'm still not sure I'm doing this quite right, but we get a parser. We attempt to parse the string. If if it works and we get a character back, then we're going to convert it to an AST element based on this whole number thing. I think that's an improvement. Okay, let's let's make sure it runs. When you do these kind of functional type things, stuff should just get simpler and simpler and simpler. And I think I think we're headed there. I don't know. It's probably more lines, but I think conceptually this match we we attempt to match a predicate. That seems like a nice atomic little thing we can do and digit is the thing that decides it should use character is digit but you can see this function is also right there ready for alpha or uppercase letter or lowercase letter or you know number or digit or all these things that can be in you know like identifier characters and stuff like that okay so we get the parser we check the results if they're this, then we then we wrap it up in an AST integer uh, the the AST type with the result and the integer, and then return the rest of the input. All right, and that passed. So let's commit this um, split digit parsing to a match predicate uh, function plus the 
part that converts to number and AST type. Okay, we'll commit. All right. Um, so normally I take a break. Uh, usually I try for like 35, 40 minutes. We went a little long, but let's let's go ahead and take a break. Just, um, you know, two or three minutes. I don't want to go too, too long, but uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. I, I feel like there's still some room for improvement on this thing. This this stuff in 2627. And I think we can do something else with that. We'll see. OK, but anyway, two or three minutes. All right, welcome back. Uh, so, OK, I, I've got this. Hmm. My, my intuition is, you know, this thing is doing two things. It, it's like I should be able to, I should be able to put these, um, I should be able to separate it somehow. But, you know, as, as I was having my little quick drink there, uh, I thought, you know, we, we haven't really gotten anywhere on the 42 problem yet this morning. I think we've, we've made it easier perhaps but i think i think the next step's a little challenging and maybe we should focus on that rather than pulling out um i think i've seen this called either map or apply that you get some input from it and you you basically transform it so we would get a character or a string of characters and convert it to a, a number and then and then wrap it in this AST type that's at least one mapping if not two I, I don't know if we need ma uh, numbers elsewhere to worry about whether it's two or not but um, that there's definitely something going on that we can we can we can reassemble these these little atoms differently into different molecules I guess but I do want to start tackling this 42 problem <laughs> okay so um, let's, let's test parsing multiple digits. Maybe I think I said parse digit about matches multiple digits. Okay. Now, um, <laughs> so, hmm. That, that's kind of what we want, I guess. We want to plug in. Oh, no, that wasn't. That was okay. Plug in 42. All right. So if you parse 42, you get back an AST and let's look at it. It should be an integer. The number should be 42 and um, I don't think we need to care about the rest. Well, it's empty. We can. Yeah, let's let's do that. Uh, how about 42 plus 12? And we want plus 12 to be at the rest. OK, so I'm trying to pick a different string that could happen and that we don't want to mess up at this point. And this is a legit expression, so that's OK. All right, this test should fail. <laughs> if nothing else, we should see 2 plus 12 at the, at the rest and maybe 4 for the number. Okay, yeah, 42 is 4, and this is 2 plus 12. So it, it, it snipped off the first digit, but it didn't, it didn't match a string of digits. And, oh my goodness, um, right now, I don't know, digit is a one-character thing, right? Well, I think, yeah, this is where it's going to be a little messy. So, so 
one combinator that you use often is the mini combinator. And this corresponds to a star in regular expressions. Okay, so if you say A or B quantity starred, you're really saying zero or more. And we need something that that does that. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I should build that into the test or not. Hmm. The parser is is a digit. That's calling our digit function. But really, we want. We want something that says many. And that thing. Okay. <laughs> well, if I put it in my grammar terms, maybe I should be doing that. Let's go back here. Character. I thought I put a. Oh, maybe it's in doc. Yeah. Let's let's open this. Um, let me pull this over. Okay, uh, I can probably make this a. Yeah, that's probably close enough. Uh, let's just say grammar. Right now we've got integer literal. I'm just kind of making up a grammar. Is digit <laughs> okay? So all yesterday, all today so far, we've we've managed to do this grammar. Okay, now I think what we want, I mean, I know we want, uh, I, I don't know, if how do you like your grammars, but I, I don't mind them with regular expression kind of stuff with the pluses and stars. Um, the other way I've seen it, uh, let's see, how did, how did they do that? They, they... well, I've also seen this meaning zero or more with repetitions and one optional I'd, I'd have to look up the the format for these things but but this this doesn't bother me i mean i know i can convert this into some sort of um multi-step grammar that either returns digit or digit plus the rest and the rest could be empty or it could be another digit you know that kind of thing that's all this means but I, I think we want this this repeater. Okay. I don't know. Hmm. This is where spreading with spaces might have been a better thing because spaces want to allow zero or more, and and one or more is most easily defined in terms of zero or more. Okay. So, so this is where we are. And let's let's make another line. Okay, this is what we want. All right. Now I think I can do many. Well, oh boy, many. Many is really is really a sequence. No, sorry. Many. Sometimes we hear many one is one or more many with one or more and that one is really a sequence of whatever whatever it's one or more of followed by a many of of whatever so <laughs> um that's a lot to drive from this little expression here oh i don't know am i am i getting too deep
Well, Digit, hmm. The other thing, I don't know, the other thing many should do, okay, is it, it needs to return an array of elements. Okay, so we, we parse these many things. We somehow need to accumulate them. And either an array or in our case, maybe a string would be nice. But um, the array of elements is a reasonable result for us. Given that array of characters, can we convert it to a number? Yes, we can. It's a bit ugly and and I don't want to be multiplying by 10, but we'll see what we got to do. Um, yeah, so. So somehow, hmm. I mean, I would like to say, what would I like to say? I would like to say. Like, what's digit? Is digit a parser? It's not really, is it? Well, it is. Can, can I say this? Is that an improvement? I, I don't think it's helping anything. I mean, somehow I want to say the digit function conforms to parse parsers parse. <laughs> okay, so um, I don't think that helped. Okay, but I want to I want to define a many that that does that. So uh, is that part of a parser? I mean, what what I would like to say is something like digit dot many. Um, dot dot parse or something like that and maybe maybe that's what I need to do in my tests what if I if I say digit Well, somehow I want to say digit dot many <laughs> or many of digit. I guess either one could be actually many one. So one or more digits. Okay. Um, Something like digit dot many one dot parse of forty two plus twelve. That's kind of what I really want to say. But digit doesn't have a member many one. Is digit a parser? I guess I don't know. I mean, it is in the sense that it's got a function that does this. Um, let me let me try this. What if I say struct digits 
is a parser of ASTs. Inheritance from non-protocol type. Well, maybe I go back to extension. If I add digits to parser, I don't know, does it work like this? I gotta say parser is something somewhere, don't I? Parser.digit? Yeah, build failed. Parse digit. Parse. Let me try a different way. I, I, I don't know. Somehow I want to. I want to. I'm pretty sure I want to extend parser. And maybe maybe that's this mini mini one. Maybe that thing's got to be. Hmm. Let me dig back to these papers. I keep referencing them. This was, you could have invented parser combinators. And um, I think this one has, well, this one has the or and and, so the, the sequence idea and the alternatives idea. Um, yeah, they have an apply here, which is pretty straightforward. Um, and they talk about many. Okay, let me look at another one. This uh, parser combinators in Swift, it it's basically this guy's taking the the Haskell operators where they invented parser combinators, and he's defining his own little operators, like less than bar greater than okay, um, which is probably great and probably kind of matches up to what Haskell did, but I'm finding it very confusing. Um, but they, I think he had a nice mini version. Okay, he has something like our, our satisfy, our match. He's got satisfy with predicate. Character to Boolean produces a parser of characters. That's kind of what we did. All right, and he returns a parser, and yeah, if, if the predicate applies. Okay, so we're, we're <laughs> not too far off. Um, all right, and, and his definition of many... And, and I'll just put this in comments because it's he wrote, wrote in JavaScript, but it's something like um, many a p is a parser of a's parser of a um, bracket a. Okay, and he's got return many one of p, and I'll just say or um, empty, empty, and then he defines many one of a takes a parser. So you, you can. This is where the combinator idea comes in. We're, we're. It's kind of a functional type thing. We're saying, given a parser, I can make a parser that lets you repeat 
things. And he's also a parser of many things, returns an array of things. And his thing is, um, well, it's, it's, it's P and many of P. Okay, so uh, and is sequentially, you know, I don't know, maybe I could say then. But it you have this mutual recursion, right? Many many is defined in terms of many one, and many one is defined in terms of many. I yeah, I mean it's kind of okay. <laughs> um, it yeah, I mean it's it's demonstrating the power of these operators. You know, we've got the the alternative operator and the sequence operator. Then you can do this stuff quite well. Um, let's see. What if hmm. Well, one thing we could do is we could we could define a rule that matches exactly two digits. Would that would that be helpful? And the way it matches digits two digits is is the equivalent of the then operator. So we would give it a parser and it would produce an array of results. It would turn a parser that produces an array and it would do it by matching the first the parser argument then the another parser argument i think that's progress okay and then i had a third paper with an examples in it let's see what they do okay um well they've i don't know if, if, if it's visible in the block it's probably not readable for sure but down here they have this routine that uh, it's an extension of parser, so that's that's good. So they do something like this. They're in Swift. Many is a parser of uh, that produces. Yeah, so I guess we got to read parser A is some a parser that produces A, and um, hmm, is this legal? Okay, and they do something that's like parser of block A that, there's the return, and then you've got to give it a stream because it's a parser. And then they build up results. Um, in a while loop. And then they return. Um, some array of results and the rest of the stream. The rest. I'm making up a pseudo language here, I guess. Okay. Um, this is their many, and then you call digit dot many, I think. Yeah, digit dot many on our string right okay now I may have I don't know how they did their digits differently than we did I'm sure so let's take a, a look okay parser we, we do something very similar to what they do with the parser then they got a character matching matching a condition very much like ours, or vice versa. <laughs> okay, um, define a digit parser. Actually, I don't know where they defined their digit parser. Okay, I'm gonna I'm just gonna comment out this stuff. All right, so I think 
parse digit parser dot parse digit I would like to say digit So parser dot parse with digit is it's, I'm sorry to be so lost. <laughs> um, I guess this is how we think our way through these things. It's definitely an unfamiliar concept, but um, we've got the parser. Is digit digit certainly qualifies as a parse method, but it is not a parser. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe I can make something that is a parser. Let's say struct. Um, no. Okay. Well, my next thing is... <laughs> Digit is is a function. It it is not a parser. So I guess I want to be working with the parser that I get. Cannot find digit in scope. I think we put things back. Let's just do a build. Build succeeded but we have all these errors. <laughs> all right, let's try and run tests. November many one. Yeah, that that we can. Okay, let's pull this out. Make sure we're clean. We should be clean with one failing test, same as this. Okay, now if I could say um let digits parser equal parser dot many one of parser no Let's see, what am I going to say? I'm going to say parser.many1 Okay, let's try this. Many1 Okay, it has no member many1, that's fine. Alright, but if I had a parser that was digits in many of them then I could do the rest of this. So now I want, um, well, do I want to do a many one or a sequence? <laughs> many one may not be that hard to write. Okay, so if you had digits and many of them, this thing would probably work. Okay, so let's see what we can do. I know it's it's a slow path to get there, but I think I think what we're saying is there's a parser extension. It has an element many one, which is a parser of many returns. It returns many of whatever it's given. Okay. Um, so this thing is going to have to return a parser of many, a parser that returns many things. What is that parser? Well, it takes um, input 
in some clause. All right. And then I guess we're going to try and write this loop. So the result, let's see. Well, we got a result that is an empty array. That's something. And somewhere down here, we're going to return result with the rest. OK. And empty complexion result of type A. Okay, and all right. Let me go. All right. So I think what we what we expect to do. Well, somehow we're gonna have to call. Well, this is where I'm getting confused. Like, where's the parser <laughs> we're calling? Okay. Um, or we let's see, okay. Um, we're gonna have to call. How is this gonna work? Okay, we're we're trying to work on, we're extending the parser class, so we're gonna call this parser is what we're gonna do. And uh we're gonna say let um uh I don't know. I, I gotta say uh let's let foo for now. We're gonna say foo is self dot parse input. Okay. And that, uh, I'm even going to put the exclamation on for now, but we'll have to do a test for the syntax errors of this. Okay, so we've, we parse an input so we can, we can get back a, um, a value and a, and a rest rest of stream rest of input okay and we want to we're going to repand the value okay so so this is matching the first one we'll will parse the thing, save the value, return this. All right, let's run this. I think this should get the same error we had. Oh, Xcode's losing its little mind. Um, let's save this. Why are you not converting? Yeah, parser, parser, come on. Um, can I have my file back, please? And your tests. Okay. I'm thinking this should run. Let's run tests. Build failed. Okay, I still don't know what I'm doing. L manager is not a member of. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is progress. AST. Let's switch on AST sub zero. Well, many one gives us the results. Hmm. Yeah, 
let's let's do both these. I think this thing comes back with a four, and then this one should come back with a two. Um, 42, 0, and 1. Okay, AST sub 0 is... AST is an array. It come, should come back with two elements. All right, I think this will, will fail. This may pass. Um, yeah, this may pass, but this one definitely won't. <laughs> okay. Uh, buffer out of range. Yeah. Okay, error. Plus 12 is not equal to 2 plus 12. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's the error. We we expect that error, and then we expect this to come out because we didn't, we didn't do a multiple. We just did a, a single. All right. Um... 25, 30. Uh, I think this is probably a good time for a break. But yeah, let's take a, let's take a couple minutes. But I think we're closing in. <laughs> All right, so uh, two minute break and uh, see you in a bit. Okay, welcome back. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I think we're we're closing in. So we're producing a res an array of results. Um. If the, we kind of want to do, well, somewhere we want to do a while loop here, okay? So we fetch the first one. This is kind of like a, you know, A and then a loop while more stuff do A, right? So uh, let's see if we can. I guess we'll just take this as a and um, if if there are more what is the what is the condition? Well, okay, it's it's there is a condition while something. There's going to be a body, and the body's going to look an awful lot like this. Okay, except maybe this is one of these one and a half things. It's like a repeat until, isn't it? Do we have, what do we have? Do while or something? Do while, yeah. Oh, repeat while, okay. Well, not terribly helpful, but but something's got to go on. So it's almost like we have to do this before the loop and then after, right? We got to get these things balanced out. Okay, so we we fetch a value. Uh, okay, so maybe this is um, maybe this is the do while. Well, no. Fetch a value. We can't depend it unless we know. So I guess we're gonna have to do a while. Um, this this thing of getting the pair out versus getting a nil, right? That you can't make this assignment without the exclamation point. That's going to be complaining. Okay. Um, let's call this parse one. You get the value. Okay, let's let's let parse one equal that. Uh, 
if if parse one is nil, we definitely want to return nil. Okay, so if we don't find any of them, that's a problem. All right, after that, we're okay. Result dot append value. Okay, let me comment these. Okay, so I fetch a value. I know it's good because I got down here with it. Um, so maybe this is a repeat while. Okay, so I'm going to say there's a, I'm going to let uh, value and rest equal parse one. Now I append the value and I'll just say while true for a moment here. Do I have to shouldn't have to put that in parens, do I? In Swift? Hmm. Oh, apparently. Huh, apparently not. Okay. That's bizarre. Here's the syntax. It has parens and a semicolon. And here's the example. It has neither. Okay. Um then this okay let's see var parse one okay um we pull out the value we know we have one because we check parse one equal nil here okay we pull out the values we append it and now we have to do another one And this is rest. Okay. Can I find rest in scope? Can I do this? Hmm. Okay, I think I'm losing that. All right. Okay, so I want to I want to break out the parse. I want to append the value, and then and then I want to get the rest going again. So this rest is apparently not the same as this rest. Um. Let me do it this way for a minute. Okay, I, I think again, we'll clean this up as we, as we get there. But okay, so I'm saying uh, we'll start off, we'll assume the rest is the whole input. We'll call parse one of rest. I don't think that really matters. Let's, let's just say rest is I want to clear the type. <laughs> the last is input. This is parsing input. After that, it's parsing with rest. Oh, that's okay. The rest is input. Parse it. Check it. If you don't get one, we didn't we didn't match the one. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to pull out the values from the parse. It should be a value and a rest. We're going to append the value and save the rest. And maybe this will be clearer if it's rest. Okay. So we got to make sure we're advancing the rest, you know, as we pull out the digits, because we 
we really don't like i mean this 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 thing we had here we don't want 2 plus 12 to be the result of this many one we want each one to be uh, pointing to the whole thing i think A many one can fail, so we got to make sure we can fail. But all right, I think do we have it? <laughs> okay, we will clean it up. All right, uh, we get the we create an empty result. We get the input. We parse that. We should see at least one. So if we don't, we fail. Otherwise, we're going to pull apart, tease apart those values from the parse result. And I think maybe that's a better name. Parse result, parse attempt, I don't know. Okay, parse result, if we fail. Otherwise, we're gonna try and save what we got. We're gonna pull out the part, the value, and the remaining input. We're gonna assign the rest Um, the rest of our thing is the same as, as whatever happened after that parse. Then we're going to parse again, attempt to parse again. This time, if it's nil, that's not a problem. Okay. Um, but our, our loop is, while well, parse result, while well, we're still finding stuff. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, so while we still find stuff, then go back around, save the stuff we just found, and repeat. Okay. <laughs> Run tests. Stop. I hope they pass. I, I'd feel better if I said they will pass or they should pass. Okay, good. <laughs> Um, yowza. Okay, I'm sure this can be simplified. <laughs> this is okay, though. I mean, we've, we've got a four, we've got the two. All right. Um, parser.swift. Now, the thing I notice about this, the good thing about it is, it doesn't care what the parsers do. It just accumulates the values out of them. So this one digit is returning ASTs. We don't have to care. Um, and that's a good thing. But OK, so let's let's commit this. Add support for parsing many digits. Now, what what I notice here, I mean, there's still there's still goofiness going on. Okay, um, we are getting back an array of Elm integer literals. They're supposed to be the same number and they're not. Okay, so we're we're still not quite uh, where we want to be. But I think I think you can see this is where my mapping kind of idea is is needed. Okay, because because I think what we would like to do is how what would I want to do. I, I, I don't even want to map it. There, there are times I want to, well, yeah, there's, there's, maybe I'm at a reduce kind of thing. <laughs> you know, I want to take an array of stuff and convert it into one value. That's, that's a legit reduce. Okay. The map comes in it would be convenient for me if I just had numbers, integers, you know, real 
real honest to goodness swift integers coming out an array of integers and I do a reduce that says append these together into one integer and that would be good okay and then the integer I get then I could wrap that in my elm dot types number so I I do want to map yeah let's 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 pull that out let's make a map that you get a parse back of an array of stuff and we wish we had a method that given that array would convert each one to a digit so i i kind of am saying i want to parse i want to find all the digit characters then i want to map them to an integer and then map uh, many of them no i guess i want to find the digits as characters many of them i have an array of character at that point and then i want to map that to an array well no i want to i want to reduce it to an a an integer value and map it to <laughs> an elm type okay so what if i said i'm going to i'm going to get a map first let's let's do the map and then the reduce so if you if you gave me back an array of integers I would I would map them to characters well I could map them to elm types but I think I want to map them to hmm okay if I had <laughs> if I had something that said map an array of stuff to a value that would seem to be a good thing I should be able to say map my digits I could say map those to elm numeric types and that would be pulling out something okay so I'm I'm looking at another one of these horrible <laughs> refactorings uh, like we did this one but I want to I want to have a map function and I think is the map function an extension of parser um, I'm not sure <laughs> somehow let's see what they did here yeah they made an extension of parsers okay so we can do the same thing okay um, let's let's extend parser and we're going to give it a function map over some type which is normal for maps and um let's let's find the swift map We should be able to match it. Yeah, transform element goes to T. I'm not going to worry about throws uh, <laughs> just yet. Okay, but transform is sort of the name they use. Okay, and this is going to convert, well, A, I guess, because it's we're extending parser of A. We're going to convert whatever value we get back to the type, and that's going to produce a parser on the type the parser of t okay and i think i think we're gonna have to do escaping same as we did before but okay um so this thing it is going to return a parser of type 
and we have input in something okay so we're gonna we're gonna parse okay so we're gonna parse the thing um, is going to be self.parse of input okay so we we call well down here it's going to be something <laughs> it's going to be a pair okay so we get a parse result if it's nil if parse result is nil we're going to return nil okay um otherwise we're going to return well i guess we have to pull stuff out let value and rest equal parse result bang okay um, okay so parse it check for nil if it's not nil pull out the values and then we return a pair well we want to call our transform function on the value and we return the rest of the input. Okay. I think that's legit. Yeah, as escaping. I I have to I have to learn how to internalize that and when I should do it and not. Okay. So I think I can call digit well what can I call digit dot I would like to say digit dot map and then like two integer okay that would be this thing and then I don't want to do the AST stuff yet Maybe at the end, at the end, I want to do that. So if I said, if I could call digit dot map to integer dot many one, actually, it probably makes more sense to map them after, but digit dot any many one dot map to int dot reduce well okay let's put it in our test i would like to say parser dot parse many one dot i want to say reduce i want to say map to Um, I'm going to, I'm going to start off easy. Okay. I'm going to map everything to itself. Okay. So if I parse my digits, I get many of them. And I map them to themselves. That should be, that should be what I got now. All right. And I have a map here. Okay, so I, I think I'm doing a no-op, <laughs> okay. Okay, now I want to do, I want to do a reduce. let's see how they define reduce reduce result into result yeah I get confused by this guy 
Okay, you want a you want a starter result, and then a function that that combines. Okay. Um. So I th I think we want this version of reduce. Let's just copy that. Okay. So if I had many ones, and I reduce. Let me let me find a Swift reduce example. <laughs> Oof. I think I've seen this page before. Reduce function. Reduce zero plus. There's a there's another reduce that lets you it just reduces what's it it assumes you know okay the the other reduce assumes you it will take the first element by default it's more of an optional one but but this Maybe there's a better choice than reduce here. Flat map compact reduce. Uh, is there? I, I want to say combine. Hmm. I don't know where you find these things. No, that's not, that's, <laughs> that's a whole nother package. Um, fold. What would you call that? I'm going to say it's a version of reduce. So I want to reduce the digits to one value. And in some ways, I'm doing a, default, a define. I don't know. There's got to be a, a correct word for this in, in function land. <laughs> so what I want is a function that takes an array of elements and produces a result. And if, if the array is empty, I don't know what it does. I mean, maybe it produces an optional result. These optionals get very annoying. I mean, map is map is great. <laughs> um. Let's let's try a different test. Let's take um, value result. In what does what does map takes? It just takes one argument, right? It just takes the the a type. Okay, so that's the dollar value. Dollar zero. Uh, 
takes an array of ASTs? That's not really right, is it? Hmm. So when I say dollar zero, <laughs> I believe my type is is. Oh no, it's still it's still un. Okay, this is why I get confused with these functions like this. It's it's not it's not generated yet. We haven't actually parsed anything until we really commit to parsing. Then we have these values. So this is more of a potential thing. Each one of these dollar zeros is a well, it's going to be an AST. Okay. Well, there's only one rest, right? So let's let's pull this out. I don't know. I'm moving deck chairs a little bit. All right, so mapping them to themselves. So what am I what am I trying to get? I I wish I wish my digit parser produced a list of characters would that be an improvement and i wish i had something that given that list of characters could turn them into a single l manager so my map is getting a parser All right each okay <laughs> um Somehow I want to combine these things. Ugh. Map is great for what it is. So I guess the deal is, I, I, my struggle is my digit parser is just too smart. And I really wish, well, okay, can I define a digit parser that returns a character and and then we call map on it to turn it into into this. This would be a step forward. Okay. So what can I extract? Okay. <laughs> um let's see. I want to extract Some I, what I wish I had, right? I wish I had function digits two, digits, digit two. It it's going to take a string and a string, and it's going to produce. I just want it to produce a character and the remaining string. Okay. Now it's kind of like this function, so let's let's extract. Okay, it matches such that the character is a digit. Is that all it is? <laughs> Do I just do this? Is that enough? Okay. 
is that what I want? <laughs> if I had a parser like that, parser of character to return type character of string. Parser of character, parser producing character cannot convert. Um, I'm, I'm close. Is this thing returning a parser? Is that what he's doing? Yes, it is. Okay, so if I call digit two, really it's just called match. If I say match such that is digit, And then if I had a function that was to elm integer, which takes a character and returns an AST. So if character this result equals character whole number, I think I kind of want this with ch that whole number value. Result is ch that whole number value. Um, I'm going to say I must know that it's an integer character. Okay, and this may be stumbling around a little bit, but Um, hmm. So I think what I'm saying is I want a different parser here. I'm doing this backwards, I know. Okay, I want match. I want match such that character is digit okay dot many of those no yeah many many of those I want many digits and then I want to map um, to L manager. All right. I'm going to map those to Elm integer. Um, let's, let's see if this builds. 
Is it the same problem I had before? What's map do? Feel so close. It converts something to something. It converts a function that, or it takes a conversion function and it builds a parser that will apply the conversion function. Why is that a problem? You cannot convert character to AST to expected argument type array of characters to AST. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, well, if you see something, please speak up. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. I've, it, it's like, I, there's just a twist to this function thing. I'm just not quite getting over the hump on. It was okay to map elements to themselves. This puzzles me. This is what I thought I should be doing. Can I move this inside? I don't think so. can all right let's see what happens with this test all right so I've I've this digit two I don't even need because I'm just calling match directly so that was Helpful for thinking, but not necessary. If you give me a character, can I convert it to an AST? Yes, I can. Oh, the problem is I was getting ASTs coming out, right? What what was many one doing? Let's let's see if I can get these from the compiler here. His type is transform a character to a parser okay but you see I'm no closer on my combine situation I mean what I want to say is combine something like two integer to well I want a I want a function hmm. I want a function that takes an array of something and turns it into an integer and possibly an element integer um Map. Map here is not helping, is it? So if I take my digits and I do many one, let's see what we get for a type here. Let's just cut this out for a moment. I should get a parser of some sort, right? So it's a parser of characters. A parser that takes an array of characters as its stream. <sighs> All right, let me let me just paste a comment. <laughs> this. Okay. If Okay, what I want is I want to say combine Um, 
I want to say 2L manager, but I'm going to have to change 2L manager. Okay. It, I would like a parse. What am I trying to get? A parser that takes a string, decides if each one is legit, returns a character. repeats that and gets a list of characters okay uh, yeah this is this is what i'm oops come on no this should be a list of characters at this point i want to combine them to an l manager i need a combine function the combine thing should be a parser that given a bunch of stuff characters given an array of characters can convert them. Is it given an array of characters? It's given a... Oh. <laughs> Wrapping my head around this function stuff is tough. Okay. Let's, let's try and write it. Oh, extension combine uh, parser. A function combine I don't know. Reduce is really the word I'm looking for. And we'll we'll see what we gotta do. Okay. Reduce of type. Some type. In our case that's character coming in. And it's going to take I, I don't know, this is a combiner which is gonna be escaping converts a if it's a parser of a to whatever the output type is and this thing results in a parser of type output okay now it's going to return a parser of t which takes an input in something and returns something Let's call this reduce one. Hmm, by analogy. My combiner is totally wrong. Combiner is going to take the output type. I don't know if I'm doing this right. <laughs> I really wanted to get through this part today and I'm struggling here. Welcome to programming. So if you have a stream of A's, I, I want a result a dot something can I I thought there was an empty thing I could do hmm okay result equals okay let's do parse result I guess parse result equals self.parse of input as usual. Okay, and I think this is going to be closer to many one than the others. I want to say Like somehow I have to get a partial result, and where did my my uh, reduce go? Documentation technologies? No, no, no. Well, 
let's copy this again. <laughs> Reduce takes a result. I guess it takes a T and a T and an A and produces a T. <laughs> Is this believable? I don't know. Um, Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, so you're going to get the result. And then back to being reduced, I guess. All right. So you're going to... I guess we're going to combine these things. Hmm. We, I may, I may get the loop going wrong here. Okay. If the, if the parse fails, there's no Point reducing. I think we're kind of back in that same mode, right? If parse result x nil return nil is that that's okay. Okay. Now we have we have the first parse result, so we want to call our combiner. Um, So we're going to combine Where's that initial value? I guess we got to give it one, right? It's the seed of type T to expect to type TA. Combiner takes a T and a TA. Combiner takes the seed. Well, let's start here. Result equals seed. Okay. Now, in the end, we want to return result and rest. However, we get there. Okay. Um, but we want to combine. We want to call combiner with value. Miner's a function. Okay, when you call reduce, you want to pass. I guess this is what I want, right? 
it takes a value, it takes a result and a value and it produces a new value. Okay, so we're going to, okay, let's see how we're doing. Uh, we take the parse, if it's nil that, otherwise we'd pull out the values. I mean, this can move up. Then we combine the result, the current result with the new value. And at the end, we return the result. The confusing thing to me is result is, okay, yeah. So this whole thing is a parser. That's what we're returning. Okay, I don't have a loop yet, but let's see, let's see if we've got any progress on this thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't have combine. This is reduce to Elm integer. And now I'm saying two L integers should be character to AST. Yes. Oh no, I need a let's let's make a reduce L integer, I guess. It takes T and A. T is the Total result. I want to take integers. Or our characters. And I want to produce an AST, right? No, I've got to take a character. Hmm. Maybe I should do this in two stages. Maybe I should do one that takes a character. T is the result. Let's take an integer. And get somewhere here. Okay, so if I take an integer and a character, then my job is to is to combine the character with the integer in a way that makes another integer. Okay. Now okay, so we can take here I am multiplying by 10. Int equals, can I say plus equals here? Oh, int equals 10 times int plus, and then oh, what do we say? Character dot. We know it's an ASCII character, I think. Minus, um, well, we'll just say return this. Minus zero dot ASCII value.
just got it. Plus sage to ASCII. Returns a optional uint eight. Okay. That can be legit. Okay. Int. Is it the minus or can I do this? Okay. Um, reduce on manager. Uh, let's see. Reduce Elm integer. My prediction is this thing should return an int. Cannot find int scope. Reduce Elm integer. And we'll build. Missing argument for parameter two. Reduce zero with reduce some manager. Now do you know? Int character to int array of character. Uh, okay. Oh, I feel like we're close. Int reduce is expecting an array of character. Is that what it's claiming? <laughs> what is your type? Many. Many. Is a parser. Takes an array of characters. Produces a parser that results in an array of characters. So my reduce should take an array. Of values And seed. Hmm. Well, can I just say characters? Does that work? No. Because that function is not right. Okay, so let's do for each. Characters. Well, we're running out of time here. Um, We'll give this the old 10 second try. Okay. Uh, ten, 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 ten. All right. Have I, have I at least got a legit build? 
Okay. I think we'll stop here. Uh, it's 1130 anyway. Um, we have now an integer type coming out of this thing. That's that's progress. Okay, so we've got something that you give it. You say did match digits one or more, reduce that to an integer, and then I think I can I can combine that, convert that to an Elm type, and and our assertions should all be okay. So we'll pick up there tomorrow, one to three p.m. tomorrow Thursday Eastern time, and I'm very. I'm very confident we'll finish this piece of it at that point. I'd really hope to finish it today, but it didn't work out. All right, but thanks for joining me. I hope you can join me in the future and uh, have a good rest of your day.